I didn't know when I stopped being a caterpillar. I don't know if anybody ever knows. First generation, born in the U.S. to two parents of immigrants. Papa was a piano teacher back in Basarabia, border of Moldova, left. Both his parents died when he was 20. Mama, well, she came from Zvinigorodka in Ukraine. And she reminds me every time when I'm on the train. Mom wasn't like the other ones. Growing up, two sisters sharing a bed until they were 16, the middle one, um, wetting the bed. They had to go outside in order to get water. Uh, growing up for her, it was the things that kids did when they were out of school was gather leaves together so that they could cook potatoes. That was the fun thing to do. When she was 16, she had a party. Her parents, they only let the boy go to the holiday. He was the only one that got the bicycle. He was the youngest, but he got it all. So the girls had a party when the guy, when the parents took him for a holiday to the Black Sea. They thought that they had cleaned up everything. They thought that they had cleaned up everything. But the parents came back and found one vodka bottle in the oven. And you can, you can only imagine how red my mom's behind was. My grandfather, he fought in World War II. He was an old Yaakov Jagun, kind of a drunk. Um, only married my grandmother by chance. She was in love with somebody who went out into the war and her older sisters couldn't take care of her. One was a nurse in the war and the other one, her parents died so they kind of married her off to my grandpa. They came back. Um, and my mother was not going to take that. So she ran away to the Black Sea, took the train. Um, at that time, you had to have papers in order to move in between cities. So it didn't take long before she was sent back. But she was always that kind of lady. Every time that I'm on the subway, I feel so pissed off half the time and then really thankful the other half of the time that I'm not behind the wheel of a car having to like get my way to somewhere. I, I can do whatever. Um, this is a little piece that I wrote on the subway called The Subway Ride. Among the entrapments we have laid for ourselves, can you hold please? Ring, ring, thumb, thumb. A head pops up for a disheveled second to ensure that the correct stop is not a past one. Down, look down. Feet don't wince if you can only scramble your face into a frown. Pockets clasping electronics buzz all the way up and into plugged ears. No fear, it's happening, but you prorated your temperament so as to what you should be able to hear. Your eardrums are unable to succumb. No mere coincidental transfer of people's lives in a certain time. Time can't be bought to rewind. Stands as the furthest thing between you and what you tell yourself at night is the essence of what one might despise. Categorize stuff people, animals, into places, instances, minutes, into cabins only to be virtually sanctified? Not it to. To return to you the feeling that you're real, not just existing in this time? That you so need to capitalize? That you're so ready to itemize that you can hardly dignify? In the guise of some semi-permanent cascade of contriving eyes, you may try to seek to compete, to compel life to be one not conscribed. Not irrationalized, not for profit, privatized, not desensitized, itemized, made to compromise, indecently commercialized, to hazard the principles by which you epitomize the semblance of what is worthy in the shadow of a greater being's eyes. A camped out, hoard out, rationalized, permanent detention for which you can never find a way to subsidize without leaving all your soul in shock. A state of permanent hunger you would never have the courage to subside. Is it to that which you would raise your head a moment from your phone, computer, TV show? I'm not hating. To give your time to a moment now humanized? 
all the while complacent to trivialize the time, the only thing you have in a moment, and can give to another to warrant some shared understanding of what stands to be gained when you can remember to look up at the sky, to size your demise into a pressure cup diminutive concoction that you hope others not only understand but somehow recognize. You, thumb, thumb, ring, ring, only enough time to say there's not enough time for all the things, but the collection gets you nowhere. To concoct to compare such a dismissive, zombied existence. Is that what you're fighting for? Is that the war that you spoke in favor for? Paid tax dollars for? Is that the impetus of your waking life? Do you see there's no winning score? The recesses you penetrate instead of regress. The lives you manage to affect the standing for something that has no room for regret. That is where the time you want to be able to remember should be spent. Thank you.